What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Timothy Desert Storm Bradley is gearing up for his fight with Warrior Brandon Rios, and that's November 7th in Las Vegas, and it'll be televised by HBO. Now, you guys seen the clip? Bradley's putting in that work, and initially, I was I was shocked when I heard that he was splitting when Bradley was splitting from Joel Diaz, just because I thought they they did have a long partnership, 10 plus years. I thought everything was going good, and it seemed like they were a good fit. So I was kind of hesitant, but um, just looking at some of the interviews and um, pictures and different things with Teddy Atlas, it's it's not as bad as I was thinking initially. Like again, no all respect to Joel Diaz, I like him, um, but maybe it's a good thing for Bradley because Bradley, I think, I don't know what it is, but I think he makes harder fight. He makes fights harder than they need to be. Like. You watch uh, early Bradley versus guys like Joel Casamayor or Devin Alexander, Lamont Peterson. I thought he looked better and fresher in those particular fights. But then somewhere along the lines, he started going on these rogue missions and doing whatever he wanted. Like Ruslan Provotnikov, he like fought with a chip on his shoulder because he was getting death threats because he beat Pacquiao or whatever the situation was. So he fought a dumb fight, got hurt badly, I think, in the first two rounds. And, you know what I mean? barely had to cling on and stuff like that. Um, Jesse Vargas would was working for the first 11 rounds. He, he started like doing different things. Like the first 11 rounds, he was very aggressive and kind of wild and just like taking it to Jesse Vargas. And then all of a sudden, and then the last round in the 12th round, he started backpedaling and trying to use a lot more movement and turning into a boxer. So it's just kind of like at that point, if it's been successful for 11 rounds, and Vargas hasn't found an answer for you, why would you all of a sudden turn back Boxer when coming forward and pressuring him and making him back up was successful? Same thing with Manny Pacquiao, Bradley Part 2. I thought Bradley was winning like the first five, six rounds, and then he just it was like he was looking for a one-punch knockout to prove something. So um, the more I think of it, Teddy Atlas might be a good fit because Atlas is kind of a no-nonsense type of coach. He has experience. He's respected in the boxing world for his opinions. He speaks out. I, I really just, he, he's like a, a straight edge type of dude. And I think the same things about Joel Diaz. However, sometimes when you have a, a relationship, a coach trainer relationship or coach trainer fighter relationship, and it's 10 plus years, you guys become friends as well. And I think that's, that might've been what happened with Bradley is him and Joel Diaz are probably like maybe too close you know what i mean and the problem with that is sometimes when you become too close to somebody then sometimes you you feel equal you know what i mean the the fighter needs to be like the fighter should never back talk the trainer or something like that you know what i mean they should be listening to what the trainer is saying and sometimes if you bleed those lines and you're more friends and buddy buddy it's hard to it's, it's hard to for me to explain like i had a i had a friend right and we were friends we hung out outside of work but at work he was my manager so sometimes that can be problematic like me and him are cool and you know what i'm saying let's say we we talk about females and bitches and drink beers outside of work but then at work he's under stress and then he, he's coming at me in a certain way he's like damn what's gotten into him you know what i'm saying because that's your friend so i think similar situation with bradley and diaz perhaps plus i think bradley's wife um she, maybe she's domineering and maybe she had a part in that. I definitely think she was like um, the voice of reason or, or whatever in Bradley's ear telling him he needs a change for whatever reason. So at first I was shocked and I was like, man, how's this going to work? But it might be a good thing because Brandon Rios is not the type of opponent. Brandon Rios to me is he's a, he's a gutsy fighter and he has one mode. So you know what he's coming to do. So that being said, if you box the right way, then you can beat him. But if you don't, then he'll take you into the trenches and possibly take you out. So Bradley really can't play around with a guy like Rios because he's a, he's a come forward, no nonsense, coming at you type of guy. And, and he could do that for uh, several rounds, if not the whole duration of a fight. So um, maybe, maybe this is a good change for Bradley because, again, I don't think he wants to do like he did with Ruslan or Jesse Vargas. You, you want to have a solid game plan. And if it's working, keep doing it. And if it's not, then adapt. So maybe Teddy Atlas can bring that out. And another thing is sometimes when guys get a new coach, they want to impress them. No one wants to be like, look like shit their first fight with another person. So 
you when you respect somebody, you um, you kind of want to Im- like you don't know impress them or whatever. So we'll see how it looks. The only thing that's kind of um, shitty is Bradley and Joel Diaz. It, it's like like little jabs in the media with each other. You know what I'm saying? And if they were working together for 10 years, I think they should have split more amicably, like to the point where it's like, you know, you don't have to take jabs at each other in the media. You guys are still, you know what I mean? You still work together just because you have a new trainer. doesn't mean you can't be friends outside or, you know what I mean? Whatever the situation is, but that's just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is ego signing off.